tonight on J Lo's Garage. I went to a lot of different schools in different neighborhoods. Not a lot of different schools because of more misunderstandings? You know, not a troublemaker, just always find a way to be around for trouble. Right, right. You Situation. know, just the worst luck, man. Yeah. If you want to check your makeup, you can... How I look is so important to me. We pay tribute to the past. Tax went 70 and the thing's shaking. <laughs> We're getting a glimpse of our bright future. This is what a Rolls Royce should be. I mean, that's how quiet it is. The moment we've all been waiting for. The brand new all-electric Ford F-150 Lightning. I gotta get one of these. A Jay Leno's Garage exclusive. Music superstar Pitbull takes us down his Miami memory lane. My license got suspended, so I said, you know what, just keep it suspended. I'm not even gonna ask you how that happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we get ready to christen another car nerd. Is it French? No. Italian? No. German? No. And sci-fi icon Katie Sackhoff blasts off on Harley Davidson's first electric motorcycle. It's got a lot of get up and go. The cops don't hear you coming. <laughs> now let's go back in time <laughs> and forward to the future. That was fun. I'm here in Burbank at our beautiful little airport where it's just nice to sit here and watch the planes take off. And I brought one of my latest acquisitions. With a 374 cubic inch V8 kicking out 310 horsepower, this new to be 1956 Packard Caribbean convertible is all class. Originally priced around $6,000, this Caribbean convertible is a highly coveted collector's item since only 276 were sold in 1956. Unfortunately, 1956 was also the year Packard went out of business. But our first guest has Caribbean roots and can really get you moving. He's arriving in his own jet and... Okay, here he comes now. Yes, sir. How you doing? Once again, I, you. I can't believe it. Pitbull, whose real name is Armando Christian Perez, is the definition of an international man of music. His Latin-infused hip-hop, featuring collaborations with the likes of J-Lo, Lil Jon, T-Pain, and Kesha, have made him a global phenomenon with over 70 million single sales to his name. And he's also a savvy businessman. In 2021, Pitbull became the co-owner of the Trackhouse Racing NASCAR team. It's the Caribbean. This see? is amazing. Have a seat here. Yeah. Look at that. This is crazy. Now I gotta go open the door for you. No, no, oh, no. I, I know how to do it. Watch, I'll tell you from Bronx Tale. I gotta open the door for you now. Watch, you see? All right, there you go. That makes me a special one. Ah, I God. love the Bronx Tale. That's right. That's one of my favorite movies. Actually, I've only had this thing a short while. You're the first person to ride in it, actually. I'll tell you what an honor, and this is a beauty. You know why I'm a big fan of yours? Because you're a first generation success story. It's my favorite kind of thing. How old were your parents when they came to this country? Well, my mother came over in an operation called Peter Pan about 1961, 62. Okay. She was 10 years old. Wow. And she went from Cuba to Indiana, so a little bit of a culture shock. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Cuba to Indiana. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Uh, my grandmother was a rebel, one of the first female rebels with Fidel Castro in the mountains in Che Guevara. And... Wow. Yeah. And then my father came over in the 70s, which they call it basically the lottery. Right. Well, you don't, you don't win no money, but you win the most precious thing in the world, which is freedom. Right, right. So your mom and pop met here? They met here in, oh, okay. in a neighborhood in Miami called Little Havana. Yeah. La Pequeña Havana. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Calle Ocho, H Street. Very, very famous street in Miami. This is a real Miami car, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it feels like a Miami car, and almost a, to the people that go to Cuba now, you're going to run into these kind of cars. Due to a 60-year embargo, the lack of modern, even not so modern American vehicles in Cuba is obvious to anyone that sets foot there. But owners have kept their vintage rides running for years thanks to elbow grease and creativity turning Cuba into literally an automotive time capsule. So what was your first car? My first car that I bought, I bought it for $400, which is a Cadillac four-door Eldorado. You got that? Wow! Yeah, yeah, but I bought it in 99. 400 bucks, not bad, considering a brand new Eldorado would have cost them 40 grand or more in 1999. Good thing it got me from A to B and from, from yeah. B back to A. That's all I really needed at the time. What did you learn to drive on? 
was a pinto. Yeah. Right. So this is about 1990. Right. And we got a pinto for three hundred dollars. Cause back then those pintos were going cheap in the street. Yeah. yeah. So we got a pinto, and that was the car where my mother, when she could take me to school, would play Anthony Robbins. I didn't want to hear Anthony Robbins at the time. I wanted right. to hear, you know, Two Live Crew and right, right. Poison Clan. And so I went to go take the cassette out. And she smacked my hand and she said, did you pay for this car? I said, no. And she said, don't touch my radio. <laughs> and tough love. That tough love. Tough love. I wouldn't have it any other way. And sure enough, listening to Anthony Robbins one way or another, there were certain stories that had stuck in my head and have helped me out in life, which I apply to this day. Hola, como anda? <laughs> so how proud are your parents of your success? I mean, they just got to be. Well, both of my parents, you know, they, they already took their ride, meaning they they're in a better place now, and, oh. but they're always here with but, us. But they got to see you be successful. Correct? Yes. Yeah. You know, my, my mother more than my father. Yeah. But again, they're always with us, and we always celebrate. And what they left behind for me was an amazing opportunity to be able to create and live the American dream yeah. here in the United States of America. Any current stuff you like, like any of modern cars? I haven't driven you know, since like 12 years. Well, oh, you haven't driven in 12 years? Yeah, yeah. I, lo I, I love to drive. You know? Yeah. My license got suspended, so I said, you know what, just keep it suspended. I'm not even going to ask you how that happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was a misunderstanding. That's correct? it. You know how it a is. Misunderstanding. That's all it was. That's what it was. <laughs> so what made you buy a NASCAR team? I mean, I know you like cars, but I know you're that involved. Well, NASCAR actually came as an opportunity the same way that you know, I look at music as a universal language. It's something right. that unites, it doesn't divide. Right. Everybody likes a, a fast car. Everybody likes an underdog. Everybody likes to see an amazing uh, competition. Of, and to me, NASCAR embodies that. And plus, to have a team with a, a Latin influence really makes, because it brings a whole new level of fans. Oh, it definitely does. It's, yeah. That's what it is. It's about uniting people, creating awareness, right? right? right so yeah. Trackhouse and Daniel Suarez being yeah. car number 99. We got Ross Chastain, uh, and we call him the Watermelon Man. He's car number one. And, he actually won a race this year. Daniel's coming top five this year. So Trackhouse is doing great. Hi, I'm Jay Leno. And if you like these videos, uh, watch Jay Leno's Garage. All new episodes on CNBC Wednesday nights at 10. And uh, if you like these videos, hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. Imagine that. Free videos. The age we live in.